Okay, so Joshua Xerxy, Bologna striker, um, just uh, 22 years old, uh, Dutch footballer, um, has been playing pretty well over in Italy's top flight this season. There is talk that Arsenal are a club that admire Joshua Xerxy and that they might be interested in doing a deal for him, maybe not now, but come the summer. Um, I'm joined by Max Jones, of course, Arsenal commentator. Um, Max, Joshua Xerxy, when I say that name to you, it, it, does it mean anything? Is he a player that you've you've come across or, or, or is it one of those classic, well, let's jump on the old Twitter compilations and, and see what we got here. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's there's a bit of both. Um, I, I have to admit, I haven't seen too much of him recently, but I was very aware of him when he was coming through at Bayern Munich. He was this really highly rated, uh, rangy striker, should we call him? Six foot four, I believe he is, but he's quick as well, isn't he? He's very mobile. So I think there were certainly a lot of high expectations when he started coming through their youth ranks. I think he spent some time at Feyenoord before moving to Germany. Um and yeah, there were a couple of loan spells that I think he had and then a serious or well, fairly serious injury uh, cut one of them short, if I remember correctly. And from then, it's been a case of just rebuilding. And I think at 22, having come back from a pretty um, extended period on the sidelines, it might be, <laughs> I say might, it will be a huge gamble if if Arsenal were to bring him in. I think... He ticks all the boxes in terms of a young player who's promising, whose career hasn't particularly um, hit the heights that we're we're expecting it to to when he first burst through. You know, look at Martin Erdegaard, look where he is now. Um, the issue I have with it is he's coming in and there's going to be a huge, huge weight of responsibility on his shoulders. Is he is he best equipped to be this person who comes in and there's this instant demand for goals? I'm going to say no because you know no no young player should have to have that. Let him go about his business as he is at the moment. As I said, he is rebuilding, slowly getting back to the the, the sort of player that that we saw based on his goal goal tallies this season. I know you watch a, a lot more Serie A than I do, Harry. But yeah, I think uh, I think it's fanciful at best that he could come in and and be the savior for this season. I totally agree with you. Um, I'm a big fan of Joshua Xerxes. I think he's done really, really well, as you say, you know, it's coming through at Bayern Munich. There were really high hopes. It didn't really happen straight away. He's had to kind of go away and, and re-emerge somewhere, I guess, less fashionable. Bologna are having a brilliant season at the moment. Uh, they're only a point outside of the top four. Um, so they're getting a lot of attention in Italy. And when you're one of their star players, as Joshua Xerxes is, I think it's inevitable that you're going to be linked with some of Europe's big clubs. Um, 19 appearances in the league so far this season, seven goals and two assists. So nine direct goal contributions in his 19 league games so far. He's got a goal in the Coppa Italia as well. Um, so he's proven that he can score goals. But I think when I watch, watch Joshua Xerxes, I see a facilitator. Uh, he, he can score goals and he contributes goals. But I think he is someone whose biggest strength is the fact that he brings other people into the game and the fact that he can link up play. You look at his physical profile, as you mentioned, um, he's a big guy as well, which gives you the option of going that little bit more direct. And we've seen with Kai Havertz up front at times that we can do that, can't we? When we're playing a team that have a really aggressive press, like Liverpool, for example, um, we have that option and that ability with a, a bigger man up front to just go to the goalkeeper, right, when you receive it. Let's not always try and play through the press. You know, I know that's our way and we'll do it as much as, as feasibly possible. But at times we've got to go that little bit longer and we've got to go that little bit more direct. Let's bypass an area of their team, which is a strength. And Joshua Xerxes would give you that. But I agree with you at 22 years old. You know, this is for me a, a really, really big risk and a really, really big gamble. Bologna are not silly. Bologna haven't been in a position like this for a long time where lots and lots of clubs are looking at some of their star players. They will want to cash in. And when a Premier League club comes calling, you know that you're going to do um, the, the, the very best to make sure that you milk as much out of them as you possibly can. We are going to have to pay big, big money to get Joshua Xerxes out of Bologna. And I agree with you. I'm encouraged by what I've seen of him. I think he's a good player. I enjoy watching him. But is he the one that's going to come in and change our fortunes. I don't think that that is 
something that you can rely on. I, I talk about transfers always being a gamble to some degree, but this feels like too big a gamble for me. I think we both agree on that, Max. So in terms of, you know, your thoughts, who, who would you look at and think, OK, you can be the man that Arsenal need because Jesus isn't going anywhere. I'm sure he's still going to be a part of the makeup. He could be used wide. He could be used as a second choice forward. And it almost, I almost feel dirty saying that we need to kind of upgrade in that position because he's been a big part of why our level has elevated over the last couple of seasons. But who do you look at and think, yeah, he would bring us that little bit extra. That's something more that we're missing at this moment. Without meaning to uh, to take the standard club line, <laughs> um, I, I, I'm actually far more interested in, in seeing a few more players from Arsenal's actual squad at the moment. Because as I mentioned before, I don't think enough players within that team have had a fair shot um, okay. at playing in different roles on the pitch. I think Leandro Trossard has got huge potential as a central striker. Um, I think within the current Arsenal team, he's probably the best finisher. Um, he's got a good record against big teams as well. And we've seen him deployed kind of as a left-sided central midfielder recently, which just seems like a strange step for me. But I guess square pegs, round holes, while there are some injury problems um, and, you know, trying to keep people as fresh as possible. Um, but I'd also like to see Smith Rowe a lot more. I'd like to see just different combinations because, as I said before, far too predictable at the moment. Um to go back to your question, though, in terms of who I'd like to see come in, Xerxes is probably the profile of a player that I would like to see come in. I would like to see a younger, bigger striker come in just as something a bit different, someone who you can hang a ball up to. We've seen Kai Havertz's goals, most of them this season, if I'm not wrong in saying, have been in the final 15 minutes of games when stuff has started getting a bit more desperate and Arsenal need to start crossing balls in. He has been able to fill that role, but that's not his natural game. So I'd like to see a player come in who can do that. But having said that, that's much more of a backup striker, isn't it? That would be a backup to Jesus, someone who you can bring on when things aren't quite going as well as they could do. So I don't necessarily think that there's too much need to to tinker just yet. But if there is a shorter term option, someone who can provide that that impact off a bench, I think Arsenal really, really need to act on that. Yeah, I think if you could get the short term, you know, alternative in now on loan, for example, or loan with an option to buy, but at a reasonable fee that isn't going to hamstring you come, you know, the summer, then yeah, do it. Um, my worry is and my fear is that we'd be settling for someone that maybe isn't going to be a part of the long-term plan. And when you consider that we're struggling a little bit with the financial sort of rules that are in place at the moment, you, you kind of you, you kind of think that every penny counts. I know that sounds a bit maybe over the top and I know I'm going to get it in the comments, people saying, Harry, the accountant's back and all the rest of it. But I just, I, I look at it and I think, for example, let's take, Joshua Xerxes, as we're, we're on the discussion, right? Joshua Xerxes could turn out to be a great investment over the course of the next five, six years, but he could also turn out to be a flop. If you go and sign someone for 15, 20 million and it doesn't work, then th the impact of that is nowhere near as, as big and is nowhere near as significant. Therefore, if you decide quite quickly that you need to move on from them, you can. So I'm okay with a, a short term deal that is low value or relatively low value. The problem is, is that you then look at some of these players that I that don't particularly inspire me. I mean, one that doesn't inspire me, and I know a lot of people would disagree with this, is Ivan Tony. Um, I don't look at Ivan Tony and think you're going to come in and be Arsenal's main man up front. Would Ivan Tony move to Arsenal knowing that he's going to be a second choice player to Gabriel Jesus? Because that's where I'd put him. 